What up, everybody, and welcome back to Baz on Blades. My name is Baz, and I talk about blades. Today's blade, we're going to talk about the DX Manus C81. Now, let me go back and give you that name again. I'm going to give you the full name from DH Gate, where this knife came from, and uh, go ahead and write this down. Here we go. DX version, new design, Manus, C81, Rat 1, tactical, ball bearing, folding, knife, D2 blade. There you go. Did you get all that? Because I'm not going to repeat all of that. We're going to call this the DX Manus C81. And this is a Chinese made, non-branded knife. There's no branding on it. Um, these knives are becoming more and more popular. Uh, coming out of China because they offer a lot of value for the money, uh, a lot of features for the money. And uh, this knife is $31.59 on DH Gate. And uh, now this particular one is in lime green G10, but you can get this in uh, black G10 or orange G10 also, all at the same price. And uh, before we go any further, let's just go ahead and do the specs. I'm going to, here, I'm going to bring the box in and set this down. Guys, I hope this video looks a little better. I'm working on my lighting and my location to film this. And uh, I don't know about this background either, but, you know, it's working for right now. And some people have actually commented that they like it. But let's go ahead and knock out the specs on this. Uh, this is a sort of an EDC size of uh, knife. It's a 3 and 3 eighth inch, 3.4 inch uh, blade length, and that's 8.5 centimeters. The blade stock thickness is 120 thousandths of an inch or 3 millimeters. The blade width, 1.04 inches or 26.5 millimeters. The handle length is 4.5 inches or 11 centimeters. The handle thickness, 570 thousandths of an inch or 14.5 millimeters. The handle width, and that's at the widest point at the pivot, is 1.22 inches or 31 millimeters. And then the closed width on this knife, uh, it, the, the blade, the design, the blade nests fairly deeply. So at the widest point here, you're at 1.27 inches or 32.5 millimeters that's only a millimeter and a half wider than the widest part of the handle itself a fairly compact design um, the overall length seven and seven eighth inches or 19 and a half centimeters the stop pin it does have a stout stop pin in it at 157 thousandths of an inch or four millimeters uh, behind the edge uh, thickness on the blade, it, I hit it in four different spots along the grind. It's between 20 thousandths and 25 thousandths of an inch. The weight, 4.27 ounces or 121 grams. And the handle to blade ratio is 0 0.77, meaning the blade is 77% the length of the handle. And that's pretty good, guys. Anything above 70% is good. All right. Well, let's go on to materials in this. Um, the blade is in D2, and that is the only marking. You can see up here on the blade right here. It is etched D2. That's the only marking on this knife. There is no branding. Uh, the handle is done in G10. It is sculpted, and I hope that's showing up. Uh, it's actually pretty doggone attractive, guys. Uh, it's G10 over heavy stainless liners. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. Let's close this up, and we're going to look at the, the comparison between the liners and the blade thickness right here. Uh, now, that's a three millimeter blade stock, so you can see those are heavy steel liners, and that's the reason this relatively small knife is weighing about four and a third ounces. Uh, it feels very substantial in the hands. Um, now, uh, all the small parts are stainless. You can see that they've all got a satin finish on them. You've got sort of a stylized uh, one sided pivot here with a just a slot adjustment 
that you can use a flathead screwdriver on. Everything else is uh, Torx. And the hardware, if you can see here, if we can get that to focus, the hardware looks pretty decent. The sockets on the Torx hardware are fairly deep. Um, then you've got a deep carry polished uh, stainless pocket clip held on by two screws in line. Uh, so uh, it, it's a good looking little package. Uh, now as far as the fit and finish goes, what you're looking at here uh, on the blade is a look at that, a satin finish. Let's wipe that off real quick. All right. You've got a satin finish on the blade and it shows up every fingerprint, um, whether you're touching it or not, it just sucks fingerprints out of the air. And so you can see it's a pretty bright satin. That's what's throwing the focus out on my camera. Um, it is in a flat grind. It is a fairly high grind. Uh, the grind is even. If you look at the plunge, uh, it is pretty even, guys. Uh, the swedge, nice little swedge right here is uh, evenly ground. This is a sort of a stylized continuous drop on the spine drop point. Uh, almost, you're looking at, you know, almost sort of a spear point profile with this added swedge here between the edge side and the spine side. A very, very piercy looking blade. Uh, you can see that you do have a decent point. Uh, it is fine enough to where it instantly catches, uh, as you can see there. Uh, but it is not super, super thin. Uh, it is thinner than a lot of knives, but it is not like paramilitary too thin. Um, you know, it, it really, the blade design holds a good bit of the uh, thickness. Uh, to, uh, close to the tip. All right, you've got dual thumb studs. Uh, they are held on their Torx bit type of thumb studs. Um, they are far back enough. You can see that that thumb stud is actually behind the end of the edge grind here. Uh, so I don't think you'll have problems with these thumb studs being in the way and any deep cuts on anything. Now, speaking of that edge grind, I want you to look along the edge here. It is very even. Uh, I was very much pleased. Sorry, guys, this uh, satin finish on this blade is very hard on my camera. I was very ev uh, even, very uh, happy with the evenness of the edge grind. Another thing is, look at this sharpening choil. It is well out past the plunge of the knife. It's sort of an open sweeping plunge, uh, but you can see in the reflection there that that uh, sharpening choil is out past that plunge. No issues to sharpen at all. You should be able to sharpen all the way to the termination of that edge with no flare at all, guys. And those thumb studs are not going to be in your way either. Uh, so as far as fit and finish uh, on the blade, the design of the blade, the grinds of the blade, the edge profile of the blade, uh, zero issues, guys. Very well done. Um, I think that this blade is actually ground a lot better than some knives that I've seen here recently at twice the cost. Uh, I'm very, very happy with that. Now, the fit and finish on the handle. This bright handle material, this lime green G10, you're sort of losing this uh, machine, uh, uh, stylized machining here on the handle. I'm going to try to just rotate that in the light a little bit. Uh, you can see that it does give it a three-dimensional profile, so it is 3D machined. Uh, it's very attractive, guys. Uh, the handle reminds me of something, and it's more in the, uh, the cuts here on the inside of the handle, uh, the butt end down here. I don't know what it reminds me of. It, it is not a copy of anything, as far as I know. And it doesn't remind me of anything in that aspect at all. There's just something about it that reminds me of something, and I cannot remember what it is. Uh, but it's very well done, guys. I love 
uh, it's sort of a, you know, it's it's not really an as machined finish. It's more of a a bead blast finish on this G10. And you can see all the layers in the G10, that sort of wood grain look that G10 gets when you finish it radially across the grain. Uh, it's very attractive, and like I say, you can get it in either black G10 or orange G10 in addition to this lime green. Uh, in the lime green, the satin finish hardware looks very good against it. I would, you know what, I would really like to see this knife with a black DLC on the blade and the hardware, the liners, the the lime green against black would be fantastic I believe uh, but this looks very good it's very well done everything has an even finish uh, both sides of the pivot here I mean everything has basically got that as machined satin finish on it. it's very well done except for the pocket clip which is polished uh, and we'll get back to that pocket clip here in just a minute uh, the liners have a satin finish on them. They are weight relieved. You can see down, let's see if we can see it from this side. Okay, you can see down in there, they are extensively weight relieved. Uh, very, very good. The fit and finish between the liner and the handle scale is very good also. Let's take a little tour around the edge here. You can see that uh, there are some spots where you could barely I mean, I can't get a nail catch right there. Uh, there, you know, maybe back here on, I can barely get a nail catch there, guys. Uh, this is very, very good finishing overall. I'm very, very happy with that. Especially considering this is a $31 knife, guys. $31. And, you know, there's some standout features we haven't even gotten to on this yet. Now, we will finish out looking at the handle here in the fit and finish with this pocket clip. This pocket clip is very comfortable in a forward and reverse grip. Um, in a draw cut grip, uh, the pocket clip's okay there too. Uh, it's sort of a compact handle at four and a half inches, uh, but that is big enough uh, to use in multiple grips. Uh, it does have, you know, it's a little bit of a stylized look to the handle, and I don't think that it's super, the handle itself is super comfortable uh, in a draw cut, but as far as uh, forward grip, uh, a reverse grip, uh, it works really well. Um, you do have sort of a pointy butt end here uh, you could use for impact, and those thick liners, again, they would support that type of use of this knife. You can see that it is in a standoff build. It's just plain, uh, straight turned out uh, standoffs. But uh, yeah, guys, this is really good. I, I really like this pocket clip, this deep carry pocket clip. You can see that the stock, the steel stock used for this pocket clip. Oh, I just see something right there, guys. Look at that. There's a screw that's not in all the way. Well, I wish I had my torch bit here. I wish I would have noticed that before the review. I went ahead and put that in. But that gives you a truer look of how this came. I've not messed with this at all. Uh, so I will have to tighten that back up. And it just looks, it's not tightened down all the way is all it is. Um, but the design of the pocket clip is excellent, guys. No problem at all going in and out of the pocket. The retention is good. Uh, it's got a good spring tamper. Uh, and it doesn't feel flimsy in any way. It's not squirmy side to side. It's not a uh, flimsy feeling at all. I'm very happy with that. All right, let's go on to the action and one of the best features of this knife. Look at this, guys. Uh-oh, what's up with that? That is pretty loose, and I'm going to tell you why. It is a ball bearing pivot, guys. A ball bearing pivot on an axis type lock. Um, now this lock does remind me, of course, of the Benchmade axis lock, which apparently very recently here the patent ended on. So we are probably going to see this lock technology just all over the place um, in the future. 
Uh, you see it a lot on Ganzo knives at the around the $20 price point. You've got it on this knife around the $31 price point. And uh, you know what? It's uh, it's pretty decent, guys. Uh, you can see you've got good the cross bolt the surfaces here where you grab a hold of it to actuate it. It's easy to get to. The springs in it are not quite as stiff as what you're seeing out of Ganzo, uh, but they are stiffer than what Benchmade uh, Omega Springs are. It's very easy to actuate. I mean, very easy. It's, it's much easier to actuate than the Ganzo versions. You've got plenty of extension here to grasp a hold of to actuate that and of course this thing has a ball bearing pivot um, I mean if you want to sit around and fidget with this thing it's just guys it, it's just like floppy uh, in fact closing this thing is hard to do with just a lock because the blade wants to just free fall guillotine down and bounce off of the stock pin uh, so you've got to actually get your time and just ride on that more technique than anything Very very smooth guys easy to open easy to close uh, on the action As far as the lockup on that uh, I've got zero Zero play in any direction guys. There is just the slightest hint. Let's see if you can hear this just the very slightest hint of a break sort of lock stick um, when you go to unlock it. It's it's not, you can hear it there, That just that little tick. Um, it's, it's not bad at all, guys. Um, the lockup seems very good to me. Now, the centering, let's take a look at that. Look at this, guys. That thing is perfectly centered. I think overall the action on this knife is very, very, very solid uh, at $31. I mean, uh, D2 blade, uh, bearing pivot, G10, uh, nice heavy steel liners that are machined for weight relief, a great design pocket clip. Um, I Honestly, guys, the only thing that I've seen on this is where that pocket clip screw was not screwed in all the way. Uh, other than that, and I really wouldn't call that a defect. I would say that's a slip for sure. Um, and I'm, let's look at that real close. Yeah, I don't, that, that torque screw is not stripped out. That's just somebody just didn't get it tightened down all the way, guys, is all that is. Uh, so we shouldn't have any issue with that. And uh, I can't argue with the fit and finish on it. I, I can't argue with it at all. It's an attractive knife. Uh, I mean, D2 blade steel. The grinds on the blade, are they're fabulous, guys. For this price point, uh, it's very, very well done. That is a very stabby-looking drop point blade profile. Uh, now this has, in the super extended long version of the name, it does have the word tactical. And even though this knife is more of an EDC type of size with a 3.4 inch blade, I think that the blade profile is a little more tactically oriented, uh, at least to me. It is basically a modified spear point slash drop point with a pretty fine tip. It's a very aggressive looking blade, uh, very stabby looking. Now, overall on this knife, guys, uh, I think for $31, uh, it's a great deal. Uh, D2 blade steel. Bearing pivot, G10, heavy stainless liners that are machined. Uh, I know I've been over this already, but that's a pretty decent deal for $31, guys. Um, you know, with the uh, exception of that one screw not being screwed in all the way, uh, I see zero issues with this. Now, 
The packaging, this is just a plain sort of box with more of a textured paper covering on it. It's a very heavy cardboard stock. Uh, it's very plain. There is no marking on it, no branding, no labeling, uh, no nothing, guys. The knife simply comes in just a plastic baggie. Uh, no paperwork in it. Uh, no polishing cloth. No zipper pouch. No uh, free, you know, anything with it. It's, it's just a knife. What you're getting for your money here is the knife itself. And I think for $31, it is a great deal. Now, would I pay $31 for it myself? I, honestly, guys, I, I say that it's worth $31. The style is not really my style, and it's a little small for me. Uh, I typically, I like to stay over three and a half inches of blade length. Now, as a disclaimer, and I could have said this at the beginning of the video, but it's not that big of a deal. I actually did not pay for this knife. Uh, I won this knife. Uh, I won this knife this past week uh, in a giveaway from Love Them Knives. Um, LTK does a lot of giveaways. This guy... Uh, all the help that he's given me personally and my channel aside, if none of that was happening, uh, and in fact, none of it was happening when I subscribed to him. I was a subscriber before I ever talked to the guy because I enjoyed his channel. And he does a lot of giveaways. Uh, he, t he seems like he's doing a giveaway every 20 subs he gets. But generally, it's about every 500 subs he does a giveaway. And uh, he moves so much content through his channel. So I really enjoyed that. And this is the first thing that I've ever won from his channel. And you know what? It's not bad, guys. Uh, if it's not a uh, size or a design that I may have bought myself, that doesn't detract from the quality of the knife at all. So, yes, I can recommend this piece. Uh, so in closing... Uh, the DX version, new design, man, a C81 Rat 1 tactical ball bearing folding knife D2 blade, aka DX Manus C81. Uh, I think it's a good deal, guys. I think it's worth $31. Uh, no issues at all in it, really. So I'm going to recommend this one. Um, and. Uh, I just I think you would be happy with it if if you want something this size a, a bearing pivot with a axis top lock. Uh, I, I honestly it's it's pretty decent guys it's pretty decent. There's a lot of aspects of it that are just a little bit of a step up from say Ganzo knives. Uh, the blade grind is beautiful on it. It's much better uh, than any of the Ganzo knives that I've gotten a hold of, and you guys know I'm a fan of Ganzo. Um, there are certain aspects to the axis lock that I think is a little bit better designed than what Ganzo is doing. And, of course, it's a ball-bearing pivot, which we're starting to see out of Ganzo, but not yet really across their product line. Uh, D2 blade steel, I love D2 blade steel. Uh, you know, D2 is a proven tool steel to use as a blade steel, so that's a positive right there. All right, guys. I'm going to shut it off right here. I'm just sort of going on and on about this knife. And uh, as same as always, I want to thank all of you for taking the time to watch one of my videos. Uh, God bless all of you, and we will talk to you later.